for each block there's a card which is which contains items to uh, make your recipes for the client it's very easy he just has to look at the recipe and if he wants to uh, make the recipe he has a, a button that leads you to uh, the uh, items necessary that are necessary for this recipe so we launched this shop because we wanted to keep all these people who were interested in our business we had to answer their questions on cake design and we've used also more traditional channels such as AdWords, price comparators, price comparisons for um, at, for at low uh, amounts of money, and uh, the outcome was pretty good. And we try to do without these things today to really focus on the content and natural referencing. So you've just talked about the blog. When you launched the blog, you said it was not very widespread. So why did you opt for this? Did you say, think, well, there's something to do here if we can you know, produce content to attract people? Because at the time, it was a kind of an uh, offbeat choice. In the France, at the time, we were the last to uh, embark in cake design. It was highly developed in Anglo-Saxon countries. So some people had been on the market for many years. So in France, we were the last to uh, embark in, uh, in cake design. And so we, we thought, OK, France should uh, move in cake design. So do you think it was the, uh, the most efficient means? Or was Did you just choose this uh, leverage by at random? No, it was uh, well. Uh, uh, defined and we, pr we publish more than three articles per week and we regularly update the blog we publish videos on on the uh, YouTube or we tutorials for recipes we have uh, weeks with a specific with a specific topic so this week is the free uh, is the glutton free week and thanks to all this we gain more clients this is what we call natural uh, referencing for 60 percent of our traffic and this is also achieved through the blog can you think of any other ideas is it typical to to cooking do you think it is applicable to other fields uh, it's as soon as it is a, a pleasure a leisure not having a blog is like a, a professional faux pas it's more difficult if you if you're trying to sell uh, seat belts for instance so you you've, you've used different levers uh, so when you started you, you said that 1200 people went directly to your platform so what are your main levers to gain new clients we have the traditional levers, like SEM, the social networks, and so on. So what we've noticed is that those levers are getting more and more competitive. And the prices of AdWords, as you know, keep increasing. And it's become harder and harder to make it profitable. So we want to we decided to bypass this and there were three ways of achieving achieving this first with the shop image we worked on the image with a, an attractive shop uh, which name you remember and that's a place where you want to spend more some time so we created some small films uh, there was a great buzz around a, a small film we created so we really focus on the image so people instead of looking for a hat or a cap on google they have immediately they go to they go to edit immediately it's pretty much like people would do with Spa 2 and Sarenza for footwear. The second strategy in place um, is the retail. Um, retail is not in its best shape today in France, but some, there are some good acquisitions to do in terms of backdoor because some traditional shops are unfortunately closing. So there's some business to do and there are good deals to make and it brings a lot uh, and now to the image. Yesterday I was at uh, France 2 during the, at the, the news at 8 and they're going to make a documentary on the cap for, and this will be presented at the news at 8 and they came to see us because we had a, we have a website and a nice shop so they could they were able to take nice pictures in the in the shop. Uh, without the shop I don't think they would have come to see us. Uh, they would not have been interested in 
seeing caps taken from a cardboard box in a warehouse in Annecy. So the, the, the shop really nurtures our image and helps us um, create the community organize and we organize uh, events and, uh, in the shop. So we launched, we're from Annecy in the east of France. We launched the, the shop in Annecy to closely follow up this sort of pilot shop. And what is funny is that we thought we were well known in the city and we were wrong. Never, very few people knew us. So our fans came to see us, of course, but we did win a lot of new clients thanks to this. People would come in and say, oh, this is a nice shop. Oh, but you also sell online. Yes, we do. Oh. So it enabled us to gain an additional lever for our business. So the community is absolutely key to you because this is what makes the value of your traffic, this community that gets together exactly, um, especially for the cap. It is a collector product. Some people are big fans of caps and they want different products. People are tired of always seeing the same caps and the same things and it's on the heads of everybody. And they're looking for a very um, specific product. So we always try to find the latest trends, the latest brands to have a, a product that you cannot find anywhere else. So if you had opted for different strategies, do you think it would have paid off? Like uh, having a blog, for instance, have you ever considered having a blog? Do you think it would have worked well? Uh, do you think it would have worked as well as that? Well, I think the blog is very important. You, we are uh, reactivating the blog at the moment. Well, we had more difficulties to make it work and live. Uh, I think it's easier when you talk about cupcakes or DIY. So we've had more difficulties to provide content on the blog. And, but I think it's still a major lever. And the third uh, thing I'd like to talk about is we thought maybe we should move international. And that was back in 2013, five countries. So we worked with a partner on Germany and the Netherlands. And this partner is called Ugro. You can come and see me. I'll give you the contact details. They work at the European Commission. And thanks to them, uh, we'll we became popular in those countries and experts exports will account for 25 percent of our turnover so that's a great bonus that's a great added value uh, so what about shops abroad well it's not in the pipeline yet but the cities of lyon and paris are in our next targets for 2016. albert tell me as an expert, Herbert, sorry, uh, what are the keys to boost traffic? Is there like a, a magic recipe to make it work on an e-commerce platform or do you have to adapt as we've just seen with the previous uh, speakers? Uh, will the recipe or formula depend on what you sell? I don't think there is any, there's one unique recipe in e-commerce. There's a wide range of, act of businesses and activities our website is for users where we have all the e-commerce offers offers in 15 countries more than 15 million products so the market for us well some years ago we thought well we want more traffic seo is important so how can we go beyond this so let's buy some traffic on adwords in sem let's buy traffic on different channels, but how can we achieve this? Well, we noticed that with more than 400 million products in 50,000 50, categories, we thought first we can hire 50 campaign managers who will manage marketing campaigns on various digital channels. Our second approach, second option, which would be more automated and data oriented, what we started do, doing, well, we started with the second approach so we set up a platform to uh, with uh, automated automated management of our marketing campaign so this platform has been in place for two years we can buy traffic from different channels 
And quite recently, we thought that this platform was good enough, and now that we could open it to our partners so that they could use it and buy tra traffic in an auto automated uh, manner. Way. So there's a series of channels and marketing levers. Some strategies work when you have a, a website with fans and a blog, when you provide a fun service. Uh, but for us, I mean, we, we sell uh, uh, washing machines or dryers, so it's much more difficult to set up. There could be uh, having a community on washing machines is more difficult, but it may already exist. But I don't know. Well, we try to optimize uh, marketing expenditure through all sorts of different channels. And I think today the um, challenge for e-commerce sites of small sizes is in fact to face up to this um, challenge. So many channels, so many different media. Yeah, that's right. I want to touch upon that. What's the most prevalent problem that you have? So what's the main problem that you have to continue at your pace of growth, your momentum? Well, well, for all of us, I think it's just typically time. There's increasing technique, technique now and technology, and we all have to realize it. You must know a lot if you can really sell your marketing campaign. Apart from that, as we just said, there are just so many channels. Some people spend time on blogs, others on networks, on mobile, on the web. So you're everywhere. So you, it's difficult to know where they're buying, where they're converting. You know, it's changing the nature of our job. Same question for Antona. Problems that you had with this quick growth, this, uh, if at all. What was it? Because of this increase in traffic and because of all these new customers who have come up all of a sudden, does it require a lot of infrastructure and organization? You were talking of inventory and stock. That mustn't be very easy. Oh, yeah, that's true, especially inventory. That's the most difficult thing to handle. When you're buying products six months in advance, you don't know if it's going to work or not, if it's going to be a hit, and how many you're going to sell. And when you don't have any more, you're frustrated, and when you've got too much stock left, you don't know what to do with it. Is that the only problem? That's the main one. Apart from that, there's all this business of uh, recruiting and so on. It's not difficult going through a very high growth rate. It's the problem lies with your stock, uh, that you make no mistakes with it. So if you on the up and up, it's all right. But if your growth goes down, then you end up with a lot of your cash, which is totally immobilized, and that's very difficult to handle. How about you, Loic? What are your problems with new customers that come en masse? You did say a little earlier that you were right about stock management, but are there any other problems too? Well, just the typical kind of problems that a growing company would have. Our sales are just over the top, and all we need is that uh, stocks keep pace with demand. So, and of course, cash does what it can. And when it's uh, growth for a long period of time, the only solution you have, you know, if you started alone as a one person company, and then all that you need to do is uh, raise more funds. Because if not, you, there's a break in the chain. So how was PrestaShop useful for you? Were you always with PrestaShop? I think you weren't, no? So what did it give you that the others didn't? Well, we are on to our third version of our site. The other one, the first one was on a site called Oxasite. It was an SAS solution, SaaS solution. And it was great for a very small city commerce with just a few orders. And it wasn't very well uh, optimized, you know, in terms of natural referencing. It was a nightmare. So we decided to go to Busy Shop, which was also a SaaS solution. And it worked fairly well. And it helped us to, you know, acquire more speed and grow. But that too had its limits. 
when it came to traffic functionalities. We had a lot of uh, demands, you know, to set up professional accounts. We tried to do that with Busy Shop, but that was terrible. You needed to have two offices. I wasn't actually set out for that. So we looked around, you know. We went shopping, and Presto Shop was a very quick decision because it's so easy to use. And it's easy for developers too. So, as user and developer, it's wonderful. So we looked around for the company that would help us re engineer, and we found Presto Shop. Tell me more about your success. I think it worked a lot as well. It was just that it proved there was that technical contribution from the platform. And you, PrestaShop, and Antana, well, we've always been with um, PrestaShop. And when we started as developers, we began development on Magento. We did that for about two or three days, and he couldn't even design the basket. So I was really worried. And so I said, let's take a look at Presta Shop. Let's test it for a day. And it just took a day to convince us. You know, everything was done, the footer, everything. And he says, wow, this is totally different. It's much easier to use. So yes, uh, the simplicity of uh, Presta Shop is really great. You can customize it so easily. And then as Bruno said this morning, it's the community bit. That was extremely useful. It helped us in our launch. We had visits, we had hits, which weren't necessarily aimed at buying our products. But at least we met the entire community. We spoke to people, uh, checked out what was happening, all the different modules and so on. So it was simplicity and community. You know, those were the two uh, strong points of Presta Shop. And um, when we launched a brick and mortar store, we needed just two days development to create an account for the Vensi shop manager. It's so, you know, you have a special invoicing and it's very practical. You just uh, in, uh, export that. Uh, the cash law software very easy, the cash counter software is so easy. And how about you? You used it re recently. Why Presta Shop? Well, we, uh, we went back to a partnership with Presta Shop, you know, a few weeks ago. We were partners in the past, as you said. But uh, our circumstances were different. We are partners because Twinger has always wished to ref, uh, list a lot of uh, products on our platform to give as much diversity as possible to buyers. So it's not just with the bigger city shops, but also smaller ones, which have sometimes very interesting products and a lot of variety. So the challenge as such for e-merchants is to handle all this complexity in all the acquisition channels. So in our partnership, we were offering a very simple solution so that an e-trader could actually end up at our place and have access to platforms for acquiring traffic on various channels. So, so we hit this uh, complexity which exists on the net and we also keep a close eye on the profitability of sites working with us. That's the difference. We're trying to do something really simple but which is at the same time extremely profitable. And Presto Shop was, of course, the ideal partner. Before we go to Q&A, and I'm sure there'll be quite a few, I'd like all three of you, what is your advice? What have you to share with others? And what have you learned from your lessons? What are your channels, etc.? 
My advice would be don't do everything together because there are just too many channels. And what's more, some ideas might work for certain channels but not others. So you need to find a single channel that will work really well for a given channel and then go on to others. Don't get too ambitious. You mean do it step by step? Okay. How about you, Antula? Well, my main advice, I'd go back to the to basics and see what my shop is like. Is my shop really different from all the others? Is my store different? What am I giving my consumers? Am I really different? Because here you find a lot of experts in SEO, SOM, and so on. But if your store doesn't stand out, if it isn't eye catching, and if you're too expensive or whatever, then you're never likely to take off. So, so the question is is my store different? Now, we saw quite a few competitors, several tens of competitors. And that's really the weakness in the community. They all said, you know, like I have my site of hats and uh, so on, and caps on. And uh, we found that there was a lot that was copied from other sites. There was no differentiation. They just didn't look anything special. However, there were others too who started off with a different concept and they seem to be doing quite well. How about you, Loic? Any advice? Well, to react to what Antana said, when we started our boutique, our shop, we felt that we had to do something different, really, at least uh, a tad different, maybe a, a blog, content, something that was different. Apart from that, it's just this business of launching a site once it's really finished. Others start before they've actually finished everything. You know, they, there's, there's content missing or their pictures missing and things like that. So it's an unfinished site. And a lot of people feel that it's very easy with city commerce and a few clicks and it's over. That's not true. You need to think about it. You need to let it gel. And Think of everything. Okay, over to QA. Any questions? Yeah, good afternoon. I have a question. You were talking of things that sell well, like lawnmowers and tractors and so on. But there's nothing special like alcohol and stuff like that, you know. We talked about traffic and so on. What happens if you're selling these sort of products? Well, I'm a specialist in evening events. Je saurais pas te dire. We do very little advertising. And uh, in terms of wines and spirits, we are working with developers, and I'm sure you can get a lot of viral content very easily. So if I were to launch a site uh, on beer or whatever, I'd go on viral, you know, and the blogosphere. Well, you know, Google and Facebook's advertising policy, you know, it's about 50 pages and it's fairly complicated. But there's just so many other possibilities, you know, depending on the country you're in. And there are also uh, restrictions on what you can do in advertising. So if you, you have to create a community based on a subject. Now, alcohol is a bit special because it's very, very strongly uh, regulated in France. Any other questions? Yeah, good afternoon. 
Talk to me about your first customers. I launched a site about three months ago, and each customer is a victory for me. It's a minor victory. So I'd like to know what you feel about it. Well, we launched Seedict. It was an auto. So we sold a lot of bonnets, and our first customer was actually called Emmanuel Bonnet, a friend of ours. No, it's true. What I'm saying is absolutely true. Scouts on them. So it's true when you start your store, uh, each order is a reason to party, to celebrate. You know, so you're, you're really happy. You go to the post office with four or five parcels, one, two, whatever. You talk to the postman and so on. And it's just part of the whole game. But of course, you have to look after them really well. You have to pamper them. And if they're happy, it's just like a loan. You get a lot more. Ah, there was another question. Yeah. Um, well, you talked about expanding abroad, of expand, of uh, well, get going global to get more customers. So, what strategy did you adopt? And how long did it take you? Tell, tell me about that. Well, I'll get back to going uh, abroad. You know, to seeking. Globally, because you've got to remain concentrated. We concentrated on France before crossing the borders because it takes ages to translate, look after logistics, and so on. Quite a bit of management. So I feel there's no point trying to cross the border unless, of course, you have a very special product that would work well in other countries. If that's not the case, just reach maturity in your own country before you go out. And now in 2013, we launched, and it took us all of two years actually, before we actually took off. And each time, each new country is like a new adventure. In now Spain, it was EV Jet. Each country has its own specialty. Another important point is that you must check your logistics very well because the prices can be very high. We are very lucky because our packets of, you know, parcels are below two kilos and there's a solution at the post office called Petit Paquet International, small parcels international. So that gives you a competitive rate and it does a good job. Now, if you send sofas and washing machines, it's going to cost a lot more. What's your best seller? It's sugar bags. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's what you need to do um, decoration on cakes, glazing, icing, and so on. And we will certainly go abroad. And, and our idea is to start a game of quiz. Because our products are, you know, bigger and more bulky than uh, uh, clothes and things. There could be breakage as well. You could have 10 kilo packs also. So if you send a 10 kilo pack abroad, a bag abroad, it costs a lot of money. You've got to find the right partners. Perhaps we should have a logistics center abroad. So there are plenty of questions that, you know, you've got to settle before you do that. Questions? More questions? Dans votre stratégie de développement, avez-vous une stratégie autour des réseaux sociaux Now, social networks, Twitter, Facebook and all, did they have an impact and how Ah, social networks. Well, you have a different means of communication for each of these. They're all very different. We started with Facebook, and it was the most accessible and the easiest. And it was really an exchange forum, so we started with that. And since our product is pleases, it's easy to do a buzz on it, you know, show up on it and so on. And uh, encourage our customers to show what they did with the products they ordered. 
And then you've got YouTube, where we have video recipes. Nice music, you shoot it in there, you all you put it in. But YouTube, Instagram shows you the uh, what's happening in the wings. What we do in our company. Now for Google, on Google we do nothing. But, and Twitter? Well, I'm not a Twitter specialist, so I can't say much about it. Except that it's very different. World between Facebook and Twitter. Because each one has its own audience and its own code, you know. I think there was a question on my right. Did you do everything internally for your development or did you go through agencies? You know, for SEO and so on. What was your strategy? Did you keep it in home or did you take partners? I didn't hear your question. For your SEO and so on. Did you call upon outsiders or other consultants or did you do your own uh, SEO? Well, we did it all by ourselves. It's simple. So, uh, you know, you're a shiver and you do everything, but, but then as you pick up pace, um, then you call upon um, other professionals because you can't do everything yourself. Oh, now you're shaking your head. Well, I agree completely because to start with, you do everything yourself. You do the packing, you do the... Uh, you check out the codes, you change a couple of things, you take photos, you make a design, you do everything yourself. And what's more? We do a lot of things ourselves because we don't like uh, delegating or empowering others. Now we have a web agency who does all the web maintenance, site maintenance, but the graphics, ergonomics and so on, that's all in our hands. We do it ourselves. And we don't have a com manager as such for the social networks. We do our own. Uh, community management. We don't have an ERP agency. We call the journalists or they call us. So we do as much as we can in-house. So when is it that you hand over? I suppose it works when you're small, but when you uh, grow in size for press relations and so on. I know you have to find a budget for all this, but when is the switching point? I don't know. I couldn't couldn't say exactly. But you have to delegate all that you're not good at. If you're uncomfortable, then delegate to get an expert to do it for you. But all that you know how to do well or if you enjoy doing it, just do it. When we got orders. You know, our first employee employer was the command or the order preparer, the one who did set up all the orders. It's a question of, you know, how competent you are, how good you are. So if you're good in something, don't delegate it. Questions? Any further questions? Good evening, Marie-Laure Margaret from Heritage. I have a question with ba on back office. What's your ERP? What do you use? We don't have an ERP for the time being. We work go directly into Presta Shop's back office, and we stock our products with an internal reference code, and we look for them with a reference number, and then we sell them like that. So so far, we haven't made many mistakes. But we're thinking about it now, ERP, because there are some advantages, but for the time being, no ERP. How about you, Louis? I'm surprised. I used to call 
Presto shop to handle my orders. I don't know how they do it. I didn't even know they did it. I use a small module called Store Commander. So that, order, you know, handles all your mass orders. And no, there's no ERP either. Because it costs, it's very expensive. And it's very difficult to set up. We wondered about it for a long time in these last few months. And finally we decided we won't do it. Well, how much do you work with um, providers? I meant to ask one of you. Well, we like doing things ourselves. And we have a sort of technological platform. And we have a very strong culture, in-house culture on design, technology, and so on, things that we can do ourselves. So we don't have to go through external companies. If we feel we have the skills and all, we just use them. Time for one, maybe two questions. Are there any more? Right, good afternoon. How much turnover do you get from Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all these social networks, Twitter? And how do you know that the sales come from these sources? Well, we don't look at it like that, you know. We don't look at the revenue source from Facebook, how many came from there. We just maintain our community and we make sure that we keep the community going so that people talk about us. That we be a, a fairy cake should be in everyone's mind. So if you've got a cake to make, the difference is with fairy cake. Huh? You know. We don't do it line by line. Now, how do you do? I didn't hear you. How do you find your employees? How did you find them? Well, initially they were all friends. The first one was someone who, you know, did all the orders and who didn't have any work. So he came to see me and then we went through the normal conventional sites. Indeed and things like that. And then um, social networks around us, you see, on Facebook. But you raised a good question because initially we weren't professional enough in our um, hiring and we did make quite a few mistakes. And it's always rather uncomfortable to do that. But now we see more candidates and we have different methods for recruiting them. You need to know how to hold your interview with the person because it's very important not just for the company but also for the person you're recruiting. You know, you should have the right person. Can't put him in the in a hot spot uh, if it's the wrong person for the wrong job. It's not very nice uh, for anyone. When people make up a good team, they then uh, work well together. Same question for you for recruitment. Mm. I suppose it's different as of, from Twinga. How did you handle recruitment? I suppose that you must have it inherent in you, I guess. Huh? Well, for us, it's a very conventional method, you know, just like any other company. Initially, of course, we tended to, you know, ask friends to help out. But then fairly quickly, we had to go and go through just normal recruitment. So we just put out our job announcements, jobs available in terror agencies, temps. And that's what we do now. We go through them. So if you want to come to Fairy Cake, you normally go through Temp in Terra. And you, Twinga? Well, it's a sort of cooptation. We look for them. Occasionally we go through external hiring agencies. So, 
sometimes we've had difficulties to find some specific skills for high tech, for instance, OE tech, and uh, jobs evolve rapidly. You know, we talked about the fact that it's very complex to manage marketing campaigns. There are new technologies and so on, and new trendy jobs among us. Uh, in our company is data, data science it's about people who are crunching data and they work on the algorithms. It's something we've been looking for. We only have 30 seconds left. Uh, we'll finish with your projects. What's to come in the next three months? Over to you, uh, Herbert. We are about to launch a new channel, which will be the Google Shopping channel with listing ads. And this channel will be significant. Uh, well, different stakeholders are going in that direction. Uh, there are, we've seen ads uh, quite recently in Amazon and also with Facebook with uh, buttons, new buttons, and more recently Instagram and Pinterest have added e-commerce formats in their own social networks, so it's definitely something we want to invest in and we want to be there at the right time. Fairy cake, who wants to start? For Fairy Cake, it's about the development of our product range under the brand Fairy Cake. It's a major challenge and the second challenges to go international. These are traditional levers for growth in e-commerce. What about you, Antonin? We want to continue our retail strategy. We want to work on our pilot shop in Nancy in 2015 and plan for the openings in Lyon and Paris in 2016. And we will also work on the image of the site through those shops and also through other uh, media plans. Uh, thank you very much. I'll give them a big round of applause. If you have any questions, I assume you will be available in the next minutes. So we wish you good luck for the rest and see you soon uh, on, a, another, on another Presto Shop Day.